One of the most common questions I receive is, do moon phases actually affect fishing? And in short, they absolutely do. And in this video, I wanna break down exactly why that happens and how you can use moon phases to your advantage when you go out to get after some of these fish that we're targeting inshore. And may that be redfish, flounder, snook, trout, all species that live inshore are affected by moon phases, some more than others, as I'm gonna discuss, uh, but we're gonna go over everything you guys need to know about using moon phases to help your inshore fishing. Now, the first thing I wanna clear up because it can get a little hairy with all the different moon phases that are out there, fish aren't responding to the moon phase itself. They don't have the waning gibbous marked out as a day they need to feed super heavily, and there's not gonna be a specific moon phase that completely shuts them down. They respond directly to the amount of current flow that the moon is affecting with its gravitational pull on the Earth's tide. So that means that fish don't have an instinctual know-how of which moon phase it is. They're not looking up at the sky, identifying that it's a waning gibbous or anything Thing like that they're responding directly to tidal flow so that leaves us with really two major moon phases that we need to focus on and pretty much all the rest we can toss to the side and that's new moons and full moons the reason for this is these are when the earth's going to be affected by the moon's gravitational pull a little bit more than any other moon phase new and full moons because it's going to make the tidal flow really heavy on both incoming and outgoing tides that's usually when we get negative tides in the winter the spring flood tides occur on those new and full moons, that's when the most water is going to be moved by that gravitational pull. So knowing this, all we really have to know for moon phases is that there's going to be increased levels of fish activity on both new and full moons because the tides are going to be moving more, which is going to displace bait. It's going to allow fish to access areas that have now water levels that they can traverse in that are usually dried up, or it's going to concentrate them into smaller areas, for example, in marsh creeks with those negative tides a lot of fish will get locked into smaller pockets and you'll find 50, 60 redfish in a hole the size of your living room. It's all about knowing how those tides are gonna be affected by the moon phases, not the actual moon phase themselves affecting the fish. Now, one other note about how these new and full moons might affect each species, most fish are going to be spawning in spring and fall and during new and full moon phases during spring and fall, you're gonna to see tons of really crazy activity for trout specifically in the spring, they're one of the only species that spawn in the spring when they're in that kind of mid temperature range of those 70 degree waters, low 70s. You'll see a lot of increased activity during new and full moon periods in the spring because those fish are consuming a lot of calories by spawning. And then with the heavy tidal flow and movement, that's a really great time for them to easily feed. And you'll find a lot of very willing fish in the spring and fall that are gonna be looking for easy meals right after they've spawned. Snook and redfish, again, spawn really heavily in the fall fall and we know that again during those new and full moon phases they can feel that gravitational pull it's going to disperse their eggs as wide as possible and they need to re-up those calories after they've spent them when spawning so they're going to easily go and feed on pretty much anything that rolls in front of their face making it really easy for us anglers to target willing fish that aren't going to turn away from our presentations lastly flounder a lot of them are going to be moving out of inshore estuaries in the fall which is the time it is right now we're going to see a lot of them moving out of the inlets and passes and those fish feed really Really heavily dictated on the tide there's going to be more bait that's displaced through those conveyor belts of food like we call them for flounder they sit in a little bottleneck they wait for food to come to them so the more food that's going to be moved by those tides the more fish that are going to be willing to cooperate and feed so make sure you're prioritizing getting out on new and full moon periods again not specifically a moon phase we're worried about but more about how it's going to affect those tides so you can even just look at a tide chart and see that there's going to be a really heavy slope on those incoming and outgoing tides and if you can find a window where you're able to fish early morning or late evening during one of those big tide changes you're going to see a lot of very cooperative fish that are willing to hit anything that gets near them because again they're spawning they're migrating they have to consume a lot of calories to keep that level of activity up so it's a really great time of year to get out there and get on a lot of fish so keep track of those lunar calendars they definitely can help your fishing but it's not as complicated as a lot of people make it seem and if you guys want to see more awesome fishing tips that are going to help you become a better inshore angler definitely check us out at saltstrong.com com. And if you're new to Salt Strong, just know that we're the best online fishing club for saltwater anglers, especially if you're targeting redfish, sea trout, snook, or flounder. There's nothing else like it, and we actually guarantee that you're going to catch more fish while saving time and money. We do this with our premium education, the exclusive insider community, and huge discounts on all the tackle you'll need for inshore fishing. To learn more, go to saltstrong.com, and we hope to see you in the insider family soon.